Learning Outcome 1.1, Define Intercultural Communication. Please turn to page 22 of your textbook and you can read that case study extract of an intercultural event and music festival. They also have examples at the bottom of the page of negative intercultural events and what can be counted as intercultural communication, such as xenophobia and immigration. Please turn after you've read that extract to page 23, the definition of intercultural communication. Intercultural communication is when people of different cultural backgrounds interact with one another or communicate with one another. So we could say then that the FIFA World Cup in South Africa 2010 was an example of intercultural communication because people of all different cultural backgrounds interacted and communicated with one another. And what would have happened if COVID-19 didn't happen this year would be the Olympics, the Tokyo 2020 Olympics is another example of intercultural communication. Now this definition, it's quite simple, isn't it? Okay, so intercultural communication is just when people of different cultures interact with one another. Now in the textbook, we are going to unpack that a little bit more because it can't be that simple. We need to get deeper into our work. Learning outcome 1.2, discussing those four building blocks and that make up our intercultural communication definition. The first building block is culture, the second being communication, the third being context, and the fourth being power. Or just to you know, make it a little bit fun and to remind yourself, P, C to the power of three. Just a fun way to remember the four building blocks of intercultural communication there. Okay, the first building block is culture. How do I know what my culture is? How do you identify exactly what your culture is? By interacting with other people, you kind of get a sense more through our frame of reference of understanding how we're processing the world, what exactly our culture is. So they're saying in the textbook that it is only with understanding others' culture that you, you kind of zone into exactly what your culture is. And by you know, going to someone else's home, by reading the books that they might read, by eating the different food, you understand, okay, this is what my culture is. So it's through interacting with others that we zone into exactly what our culture is. And then you can just quickly read that, what do you think on the page on page 23? What do you think when you think of South African culture? What comes to your mind? Is it Gatsby? Is it, a, you know, a table mountain? Is it the film and media? Is it the book cup? What exactly comes to your mind when you hear about South African culture? Okay, so you're thinking about it, yes? All those different concepts you might have is making up that culture. So all those ideas and values all make up your culture. We also have our definition of culture there. It's a learned patterns of perception, values, and behaviors shared by a group of people that are dynamic and heterogeneous. I also like you to read that examples there on page 23. Culture is broken down with six characteristics. So you would have seen in the definition there, learned being the one, perception, behavior, shared, dynamic, and heterogeneous. Okay. Dynamic heterogeneous being the one characteristic there. So these make up six characteristics of culture. Culture is learned. It involves perception and values, involves feelings, it's shared by a group of people, it's expressed by our behavior, and is dynamic and heterogeneous within the group, meaning that everyone's not the same. So let's break down a little bit more. What exactly do these six characteristics mean of culture? Culture is learned. We are not born cultured. We know everything. We know all the rules. We know all the traditions. We know how exactly we're supposed to, you know, behave in this culture. We are taught all of this. It's a generational. We are taught exactly through socializing with our family and our friends what our culture is. So firstly, culture is learned. As you can see in the picture, they're teaching how to make the fire. And in that way, it becomes internalized, which is why I put inculturation, which is part of our communication science 1A work which is that the culture becomes internalized and taught, and we start to act this way. We start going to mosque. We start going to church. We start reading the Quran or the Bible. We um, know how to greet that auntie and so on. So we are learning our culture. Next is culture involves perception. 
So if you remember from Communication Science 1A, culture is processed in the mind and is internalized there to interpret exactly what we're trying to understand. So culture can also be a perceptual lens. We're trying to process in our mind the software of our culture. We're going to select, you know, the information, organize it into groups and interpret what we have organized. We're calling this the process of perception that has these three phases. The selection process is to say that we do choose exactly what we pay attention to in terms of the features of the stimuli, the size and intensity and how important it is to us. And then we go through this perceptional phases, which is that we take what we're seeing. So this would be our way of our perception internalizing what we are trying to understand. We see this person sitting on the lawn. We're going to organize into, okay, this is what the person is doing. And we're going to assign meaning to what we have witnessed. If you look at the scenario between Marcus and Patience, and you can just read there. Marcus and Patience are walking across the lawn in their university. And Marcus is disturbed by the loudness of a conversation of a group. He doesn't understand why they're being so loud, so you can't talk to patients. But patients who have grown up in that culture is not disturbed, but just notice that this is quite normal to her that they speak in this way. Okay, so this is going into the categories of, okay, you know, this is quite disturbing to me, I don't understand it, but it's quite different selection process for patients. So you can just read through that scenario of how when we are exposed to different stimuli, um, it does go into a different category in our brain based off the different cultural backgrounds. We may select and organize differently in that way accordingly to our own culture. So culture is kind of like a computer program of how we're going to be thinking and feeling and acting. Okay, are we so good so far in terms of our two characteristics? Okay, let's move on to number three. Culture involves feelings. You might experience this actually when you travel, that you might feel homesick, or you might feel when, when you, within your culture a sense of familiarity. Um, familiarity. It also can be embodied ethnocentrism, which we get to the last part in our chapter, which is that we can feel at times that our culture is more superior to other cultures, which is not a good thing. But it can happen that we can feel that our culture is the best culture. When we are in other spaces, we are quite aware then of, you know, in a Japanese restaurant, we have to sit a certain way or eat with chopsticks, and it can cause psychological and physiological discomfort. We feel more comfortable within our own culture. We know exactly how to act. And when we're within other cultures, we can experience either out of our cultural zone or we can experience just cultural shock. If you go to another country, they're speaking a different language, they're eating different food, you might not know how to, you know, what to say, what to do, and then that can be a sense of major culture shock to just out of my cultural comfort zone. Therefore, we say that culture involves feelings. As you can see on the right, we might know what to do in these different settings, but someone that has not experienced their culture doesn't know what to do. And therefore, we should not underestimate our feeling of comfort and familiarity towards our culture. Culture is shared. So something that is going to happen within your culture is you're going to share with all your family members and friends. It's going to require interaction with other people. Therefore, it is a group experience. Our perceptions are the same to those that can be in the cultural group as well of how we're thinking about how to make this food or how to feel in terms of our values. Okay, and then you can just read through all of those examples there. Okay, culture is shared. It's a membership also that when we're within a culture, we fall into two groups. Culture is voluntary or involuntary. When we are in within these groups, we can say that when we are part of the involuntary group that we just fall into, we can't help it. So remember, culture is made up a lot more than just what you eat and what you wear. It also determines what age bracket you're in. It's, it's all the ideas that is put to you in a sense of, you know, this is your race, this is um, your, your religion. It all makes up our beliefs, values, and attitudes. So an involuntary group that you make up of is age or your race. It's things that you can't help be a part of in that culture. Volunteer can be a profession or a hobby that can add to your culture, but it's something you would choose. 
Um, we can also put in voluntary religion that can also you can be born into you know the religion that you're in and then voluntary choose another you know religion culture is expressed as behavior it influences your perception if you look at on page 26 we once again have marcus who was born in individualism so this goes back into your communication science 1a work where he was expected to be independent the i identity and to be on his own and make up his own decisions about marriage and dating, where his patience was born more in collectivism, where to take care of all the family members and take them into consideration in those marriage decisions. And therefore, this is going to affect how we behave and how we see the world through our cultural lens as well. Lastly, culture is dynamic and heterogeneous. Just because you're born within a certain culture and you're learning about the culture doesn't mean that you think exactly like everyone else within their culture. Therefore, we just say the culture is dynamic and heterogeneous because not every, all the people within the culture are going to think and act and just behave the same way. However, what tends to happen is, on our page here, page 27, is people tend to group people together. They all behave the same way through these categories. On table 2.1, interesting cultural behaviors. I'm just going to say example here. The French expect promptness. They are not accustomed to standing in line. Or um, in Thailand, the Thai people greet each other with a wide um, greeting, hold your hands together at the chest like a prayer and give a, a light bow. So this is kind of grouping cultural behaviors together to say that all people act this way. And that is not true because everyone within a culture is different. Okay, in the next um, clip, we're going to talk about the second building block. Let me know if you have any questions about the intercultural communication definition. Do we remember what it is? What is intercultural communication? Do you remember? That is correct. It is when people from different culture backgrounds interact. Can you remember what is the six characteristics of culture? Can you remember them? Okay, it is learned, perception, feelings, what else is there? Um, shared, um, culture is dynamic and heterogeneous. And I'm not sure if I said feelings, but remember we're going to put all and shared and learned all of that together. And the way to break and to try and remember all six characteristics of culture is to remember the definition of culture. Culture is learned because we, even though we are part of this culture, we don't born knowing all the rules and traditions. Culture is different within the group. It involves feelings where we can feel out of our comfort zone where we're within a different culture and shared by a group of people and so on. In the next clip, we're going to be learning about the second building block of, which is communication.